Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here with our third and final example for trig substitution using tangent. We've got the integral of dx over the quantity 25 plus x squared, that quantity all to the 3 halves power. We want to see this. Without the 3 halves, we'd have a nice little tangent definition, inverse tangent, but here we'll have to see this as an a squared plus u squared. Do a substitution here. Our uh, a is 5 in this example, and our u is x. So when we say tangent substitution, we let u equal to a tangent of theta. And that gives us then that x is equal to 5 tangent of theta. Of course, we'll also need a substitution for dx. So we'll take the derivative, and derivative will give us 5 secant squared theta d theta there. Okay, we'll be able to use those to plug in and substitute everything in terms of theta. This x equals 5 tan theta. If we divide both sides by 5, I can see that tangent of theta equals x over 5. And hopefully I remember that tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent in a right triangle. So if my theta is here, then opposite will go here and adjacent will go here. And my third and final side, this squared plus this squared equals this squared. I will get that my hypotenuse is the square root of 25 plus x squared. Okay, we're good to now sub everything in terms of theta. So our dx on the top will be 5 secant squared theta, d theta. And then on the bottom, we will get... 25 plus when I square x, I square that and I get 25 and I also get tan squared theta. All of that to the 3 halves. Okay, first thing I will go ahead and bump out my 5. So I'll have a 5 on the outside. Secant squared theta d theta. And below we just want to be careful with our 3 halves power. So the 3 halves power is a lot like having the square root of 25 plus 25 tangent squared theta. That's the half power part, and then having all of that cubed. Okay, so the first thing that we will do, I think, is maybe factor out our 25. We can see a little bit better what's going on have secant squared theta d theta, and then we'll have the square root of 25 times the Pythagorean identity we were creating on purpose, which is 1 plus tangent squared theta, all of that cubed. So we will go ahead and pull out the square root of 25. But I want you to notice that it is being cubed. When we pull it out of the root, we cannot also pull it out of the cube. So if we go ahead and say 5 times this 1 plus tangent squared theta, all of that cubed, the 5 does not fully reduce with the 5 that's out there. If I cube this 5, I actually get 125. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and continue over here. So I will get 5. 5 cubed would be 125, so I have 125 that I can pull out from the bottom. And then I get secant squared theta, d theta, and on the bottom I get the square root of secant squared theta, all cubed. Okay, so it shouldn't be too bad to reduce this. We get 1 over 25 in the front. We'll keep our secant squared theta d theta that we've had since the very beginning. Then I will have secant cubed theta on the bottom. And if we reduce two copies of secant from the top and the bottom, that will give us 1 over 25 integral d theta over secant theta. 
and that is going to be more easily done as 1 over 25 antiderivative of cosine theta d theta. Okay, easy antiderivative there. We get 1 over 25 sine of theta plus c, and then we'll go back to our triangle here, and we'll notice that, remember, sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And in this case, that is going to be x over the root. So for this one here, we will get, okay, multiplying the 1 over 25 times what we have for sine theta, so we'll get 1 times x on the top. And then on the bottom, we'll have a 25 times that root. So 25 times root 25 plus x squared plus c. Okay, that's our final tangent trig substitution example. We have others on sine and secant. Check those out in our Calculus 2 playlist. We'll see you in the next video.